هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم يسألك الناس عن الساعة قل إنما علمها عند الله وما يدريك لعل الساعة تكون قريبا حركاتهم وهمومهم وعزومهم لله لا للخلق والشيطان نعم الرفيق لطالب السبل التي تفضي إلى الخيرات والإحسان تفضي إلى الخيرات والإحسان بسم الله بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الحمد لله رب العالمين another episode with my dear brothers on a discussion I think إن شاء الله that will be very interesting this time I'm not in the UK, I'm in the United States of America, in the city of Buffalo, joined by my dear brother Sadiq and Abdul Malik. Now, I just want to get to know you lot. So I know you've had a journey, you've had different trips around the world and what have you. Let's start off by, you know, talking and discussing about your journey to the Quran. You know, you guys learning the Quran. First of all, Sadiq and Abdul Malik, where were you lot going? Tell us a bit about yourself, just a brief. Bismillah wa salatu wa ala Amma I'm I'm the oldest out of, out of my siblings. Okay. I'm, four of us. I have two brothers, Sadiq Mu'ad and my sister, one sister. Okay, um I was born in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, beautiful tropical island. Eh? Yeah, alhamdulillah, really beautiful. I'm the only one who was born in Trinidad and Tobago. The rest of my siblings were born here in the US, in New York. Alhamdulillah. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah. Naam, I was born here in uh, New York City, in the United States of America. Alhamdulillah. And tell me about yourself. We'll start with you, Abdul Malik. Tell me a bit about yourself, background ones. Just give us a, a brief about yourself. A bit more specific. Okay, so basically, what I mean by that, your upbringing. How would you remember when you were born in Trini? Do you have any sort of memories there? Honestly, I, I don't have much memories when I'm young. Okay, when you're yeah. young. Okay. So let's. How about you, Sadiq? Do you have any memories of being born in New, in, in New York City? Not the first couple of years, no. Okay. So let's get into <coughs> the first trip that you lot had leaving the US. Okay. Where was that, and how old were you lot? The first place we, we the first country we traveled to. Besides the U.S., but for myself, I was Morocco. Okay. That's the first first move we ever made. Made, yeah. Okay. That was that as a family. It, yeah, together. Okay. It it didn't work work out for us. We stayed for I think three months. My father he will know better. Okay. Yeah, we started uh, learning Qaeda, Alif Ba Ta Ta. Um, and how to read the Quran. And how old were you at that time? Honestly, I think it was four or four or five, or something, around that age. Okay. Yeah. So, you, would you remember anything in terms of Morocco? Uh, I do remember uh, very, it's very uh, hazy. Okay. Yeah, I remember the masjid and uh, uh, my uh, Quran teacher and stuff. He was a very tall brother. But that's all I can remember. <laughs> Okay, so then, what was the next move after Morocco? Where did you lot go after? After Morocco? Yeah. Uh, I think we went back to the United States for a bit. And then uh, my parents got through to go to Egypt. Okay, yeah. so How long did you stay there for? In Egypt, uh, we stayed roughly around four to five years. Okay, four to five years. Yeah. And how was that? It was, it was our journey to... Uh, it was our journey to to learn Arab Arabic and the Quran. Okay. Uh, we had uh, we were, uh, we had 
Quran teachers who used to come home to us, three of them. So that was private, basically. Private, yes. Okay. Alhamdulillah. We had a uh, one for hifth muraja'ah and one to help us uh, with the makharij and uh, the tajweed. Uh, so one of them used to come after fajr, the other used to come after duhur, and the other used to come after asr. So you've got one that's coming specifically just to help you not memorize. Hif. And then hif, and the other one is just for tajweed, pronunciation, yeah. and, 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 yeah. and then the last one is for muraja'ah. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And like for you, Sudi, when that was happening at the time, obviously you must have been really young. Yeah. How long did it take you to adapt to the Arabic language? Uh, see the Quran as well, like. It was easier to adapt because you know we were younger, yeah. and we had to understand the teachers and and uh, the Egyptian people and, and the Arabs. Yeah. So it was easy for us to learn to understand and also uh, read and recite the Quran, you know. But when it came to Nahu and and uh, when it comes to Arabic. The grammar side. The grammar side. Yeah. It's very, very hard. I think, uh, inshallah, I'm very weak in that. You know? We all are. It's not, it's not something that one can say that you know they've mastered 110 percent because obviously it's a journey. But that's just reminding Subhanallah the whole statement that the Arabs say, "Ta'alim of al can al hajar," isn't it? Like you know, when you learn something young, or a child is exposed to something that's good at a young age, it's like engraving it on a stone. They won't mm. forget. So when it comes to like sometimes you see parents they want to make their child when they hit the age of, you know, puberty, 14, 15, whatever age it may be, then they want to start, you know, yeah. making them learn Qur'an, mm -hmm. when their whole life has not, Qur'an was never kind of introduced to them. Yeah. So then that child, when they reach a certain age, it's like, sometimes, it depends obviously, yeah. but my point is that it's, it's good to s slowly, slowly, you know, introduce to your children when they're young, Qur'an, loving the Qur'an, and stuff yeah. like that. Okay, so, how long did you not stay there for, uh, Malik? Egypt for four to five years. Four five years. Yeah. So when you both left, I want you just you know say that you know you can both interject whenever. How was it for you lot when you left? Um. Like in terms of the Arabic, the Quran, where did you meet at that stage, and how old were you? At that stage, uh, me personally, we d we didn't comp complete the Quran in Egypt, but I, I memorized most of it in Egypt. Uh, yeah, as well. I, I memorize, I think, either it's half of the Qur'an at, at that point, or a little bit more. And, and how old are you? What, what age are we talking about? Uh, I think I was uh, around eight. Eight years old? Yeah, yeah I was ten. You were ten. Yeah. Um, but okay, so at that time you've got basically half of the Qur'an, or a bit more, no. and the Arabic language is more or less... You want, you, you we, we could understand. You can understand Arabic, and speak. Yeah. Yeah. So then, what was the next move? So from there, I believe we, we, we returned to, to the U.S. at Siddiq. Yeah. Or Trinidad. E Egypt. We returned to the U.S. for uh, for my mom to deliver our our beloved brother, Moab. <laughs> yeah. So then he was born. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So at this moment, he's not... Okay. Yes. So then, where was the next move outside of the U.S.? Because I know obviously you had another move. Where was the next... So then we returned to Egypt and we stayed yeah. for a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, my dad heard about the Maj. Okay, mashallah. At the point in time, it was, uh, mashallah, it was really good to go there and study. Yeah. yeah. So he heard about the Maj and uh, we tried to go for the first time, but we were turned back for some reason. Uh, I can't really remember much about why we were turned back. Okay. It was vivid. And Alhamdulillah, we tried another time, and the second time, Alhamdulillah, we, we were able to go to uh, to the Maj and benefit, and benefit yeah, yeah. So talk to me about that, uh, Habibi. Uh, how was that experience? Obviously, that, that time you were 12, 10 years old, right? 11. 11. Okay. Uh -huh. It was, it was uh, subhanAllah, I remember uh, when we were driving in from Sa'ada into the Maj, and um, it was a uh, completely a different lifestyle the houses were made out of uh, mud or what you call it yeah, yeah. and uh, there's uh, no electricity there's no uh, water in the pipe uh, it, it was it was completely different it was a totally different lifestyle we were we were not expecting it <laughs> so so that US and Egypt and going there, so yeah back to I remember when I first came out the van 
my my feet my foot was was shaking. Are you scared? <laughs> yeah, because it was it was a completely different environment. And obviously you were a little very young. Yeah. As well. Yes. So it's a humble life. So how how was that? It's like what did you manage to catch from there? What did you manage to benefit? It's very beautiful. From uh, what I can remember is that uh, we had classes every day after every salah uh, after every salah except fajr. Uh, after Fajr, we, the, the brothers in the masjid, I'm really speaking about thousands of brothers, yeah, yeah. just to stay back and they used to focus on the Quran, Hifz okay. and okay. after Fajr, okay. two, three hours, some used to stay until yeah, um, After Dhuhr, we used to do, uh, I believe it was a, a book by Sheikh Muqbil, Al Jami, Sahih Al Jami. And then uh, after uh, every class used to be about half an hour after the salah. That was a sheikh teaching that you mean? Yes, Yahya okay. Hajuri Mashallah. at the time. So then obviously you've got classes after every single salah, salah except for Fajr. No. Yeah. no so Sadiq, so how was that experience for you? Because obviously you were a bit younger than him, two years younger. Yeah. So how was that for you? Well, alhamdulillah, uh, our experience in Egypt, it, uh, it trained us, you know. Uh, yeah, Alhamdulillah, it was really beautiful. Alhamdulillah. We also went to uh, uh, by Muhammad al Imam in Ma'bar. Okay, we benefited from him as well. And we visited uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahman al Adani rahimahullah, before he passed away. Uh, so we got to meet a lot of mashayikh and benefit from them. Alhamdulillah. At any stage, did you look for homesick? From the US? No. no. Because because at the beginning, yeah. <laughs> but after, after, yeah, yeah, after we, after we, we stayed there for a while. Yeah. Um, we began to to love the life over there, okay. because it's only talibul it's, it's only knowledge, and uh, the brothers are close, and the match was known to have a lot of foreigners. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. very easy to, uh, to, f to, to be around the brothers, you know. Um, and everyone were open to everyone, you know. Yeah. You're gonna say something today when I ask you the question. Oh yeah, uh, I I never felt homesick because I I wasn't accustomed to be in in the West much at oh, my yeah. younger age, you know. Yeah. But I did miss Egypt because uh, uh, one of our teachers, yeah. Sheikh Abdul Karim, uh, mashallah, he was a real benefit to us, you know. In Egypt. Yeah, it was very hard to. Leave him. leave him behind, you know. Okay. So then, obviously, how long? How long did you lot stay there? In the match for one, one year and one month. One year. What was the, what's the worst experience and the best experience for you? The worst experience was when the harb was going on. Okay. Because the harb start. Yeah. It started when we were there in the match. Okay. When the Houthis came and yeah. yeah. So sometimes you used to hear the bombs. You know, when they shoot it and it hits the mountain and you know. And you lot were very young at that time. Yeah. I remember the house shaking in the middle of the night. My parents, they came into our room and they were like, um, come, come, come with us, come stay with us. Because at the time, was uh, Mu'ad was two years as the youngest yeah. brother. Mm. Uh, myself, Siddiq, and my sister, Alia. Uh, Alhamdulillah, they, 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 we went and we slept in one room, but it was, it was very frightening because the house, the whole house used to shake. The whole house used to shake. It was very terrifying. So obviously your parents wanted to come for you to stay with them. Yeah. yeah. SubhanAllah. And um, what's your, yeah, so that was the worst moment for you. How about the best moment? The best moments was uh, before the harb. <laughs> and yeah, everything. The yeah, thing. the whole thing before, alhamdulillah, it was, it was amazing, you know. Just studying and being with the tulab, you know. Alhamdulillah, it was amazing. So the best of all experience. Life the same thing. thing. So obviously it really rubbed off you lot in terms of being in that environment of just knowledge. It made you lot want to also yeah. see knowledge. Yeah. More. Yeah. But okay. Yemen yeah, I is finished now. What's the next move after the match? Where where next? What's we the next chapter? We moved back to Trinidad today. Okay. So tell me about Trini. I want to know about Trini. <laughs> Trini is Trini, man. <laughs> Is Trini. <laughs> Tell me, how was that experience? Like, how, like, how was Trini? Like, obviously now you've been in Egypt, obviously US, Egypt, and then Maghreb as well, and then the Maj, yeah. and now 
stringy. That's like a complete 360 turn, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, um, it was difficult for me to socialize with the with the people in Trinidad because of your mindset, obviously. I'm guessing. Was it? Was it yeah, uh, like <coughs> in Trinidad, long stand, you hear a, a lot of music and stuff. We never used to hear these kind of things. And, uh, no, at all. So I remember uh, they used to have these big trucks passing with music in Trinidad for some kind of event, carnival, and um, you know, when it has Diwali. Uh, yeah. And uh, I remember I was so disgusted by it. I would take my my hands and put it in my ears. It was it was like completely different from what we were brought up in from Egypt and the match. But, but how um like in terms of schooling now? Obviously, you probably entered school. You had to go to school, right? Uh, no, we were homeschooled well, our school. entire yeah, life. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. I was going to say that must have been difficult, but. When you were homeschooled, were teachers coming to you, or meaning your parents teaching? My mom, mostly. Yeah, um, mostly yeah. and th we uh, also had preserver. private teachers yeah. here and again, but it's mostly my mom. Yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, see, that's a, another message as well for a lot of the people that are, have children: is it doesn't matter how much you have to sacrifice for your children, whatever you need to do to keep them firm and steadfast upon the deal. I think that's, you know, that's that's very very important. Mm. Okay, so tell me, did you not ever have any incidents? How was the life there? Did you ever face bullying from the other children? Did you learn to adapt and fit in quickly? No, I, I don't think uh, I faced any bullying from the other children, but it was very hard to uh, socialize with the people there okay. in Trinidad yeah. in the beginning, you know? Yeah. But uh, obviously you get accustomed. So how, did you, how did you manage to over, you know, overcome that barrier of, you know, Socializing with them, and uh, I guess it's just the brothers. They keep coming, and you know, what brothers? The brothers, and uh, oh, I think we we left out that Alhamdulillah. That's where my uh, my dad opened our first masjid. Okay. Masjid okay. Ibadah Rahman. Okay. So brothers used to come to the masjid, and uh, a lot of them would you know keep on coming to us and talking to us, and. You know, eventually you just go to like the brothers and you socialize with them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So guys, I want you to tell me because I know it's, it's called Trinidad and Tobago. Is there a difference between Trini and Tobago, or was it one, or is it? Yeah. So Trinidad is uh, the bigger part of the country. Okay. Okay. It's two islands. It's Trinidad and Tobago is a is a small. It's like a little island. So you lived in Trini. Yes, yeah. Trinidad. Yeah. Okay. And how about yourself, Abdul Malik? In terms of like socializing. How did you overcome it? Was it the same thing? Same, same thing. Same, thing. same, same thing. exact thing. Okay, what things did you see there that really shocked you in terms of, you know, that was different that you didn't see before? The, the society, society in general, yeah. Just um, to seen kuf uh, a lot of kuffar all about and the music and uh, the sins and the fahsha. Uh, it just have a, an effect on, on, on me personally. I wasn't accustomed to, to seeing these kind of stuff, you know. All in the open kind of yeah. Thing. And how many years did you not stay there for? I think it was two years. Oh, so it wasn't long? No, it wasn't long. No. And then, alhamdulillah, we got through to go to... Uh, we first Amer we came to America, yeah. and then we got through to go to Saudi. This was the first time. This was in 2009, around 9 and 10, around there. How, how old did you look at that time? I was, uh, I think I was 11. Oh yeah, so still yeah. yeah, accurate, yeah. 13, I was 13. Okay. Yeah. So tell me about Saudi. <laughs> I think that was used because I asked you already, you two, like, both told me that was the best experience. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. the best, yeah. So, the man, if I'll begin with you, tell me, moving to Saudi, what's going through your mind, emotions, which city did you go to? The first city we went to was Mecca. Mecca. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, um, it, w it was the best out of the best, huh? the, the best of the best. Oh no, we went to Riyadh first, and we met uh, Mustafa, Mustafa George oh and uh, yeah. another brother named uh, Daniel Rashid. Rashid, oh, yeah. he, he's from Trinidad. Yeah, from Trinidad. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So how was that? How was that? Uh, alhamdulillah, it was really, really nice. It was, uh, you know, we was amazed by just to be back into a, a Arab country, with living with the Muslims here in the Adhan, you know. And uh, being in the society of the Muslims, alhamdulillah, it was amazing, you know. But that must have been very different because obviously it's like Egypt, the Maj, and Trini and stuff, and now it's the case of Tawheed, you know. It, yeah. what, what was going through, in terms of like you, Sadiq, when you went there, like was it just all amazing, or did you like 
taking him to get accustomed to the area in Saudi? yeah in Saudi no no it, it didn't it didn't take long to get back accustomed to Saudi because remember we lived in Egypt for okay, yeah. you know four to five years and then Yemen so most at that point most of my life was in the Arab world yeah. it was so I, I rather I, I was alhamdulillah I was happy to be in Saudi yeah, back here yeah. okay. so the question that I posed to you earlier what was going through your mind your emotions how was that for you in Saudi yeah when you first touched me you like explain to me your first it, w- it was very be- beautiful. Uh, Allah Akbar. Uh, the brother who, who hosted us, Mustafa George, uh, he took us to a couple places, uh, different masajid. Uh, he took us to, to see Sheikh Abdullah Al Qudayyan, Rahimahullah. Um, Subhanallah, we, we got to see Sheikh Fawzan. And it, it, was, it was completely different. It, it was different the, the ulama in, in Saudi Arabia were, were different from the ulama in the Maj uh, in terms of the uslub and uh, the muamalat and stuff with the people it was a, a bit different okay. yeah. now tell me how was at that time in terms of you lot learning Arabic and the Quran where did you reach in when we reached each, when we reached Saudi Arabia we we, we completed the Quran in, in Jundat yeah, the Mali- two years yeah. that we stayed in Trinidad after yeah. the match, yeah. we completed the Quran. So we should continue giving okay, up so the Quran. Trinidad, no. so who, who was coming? Did you have a teacher coming? No, my mom. My mom took over. Your mother took over? No. Allahu Allah, yeah. um, um, So tell me about that. How was that? In terms of, you know, you were telling me in terms of completing it. Oh, that, that was one of, that, that was, I think, the best day of my life. Serious? No. I, I was, so I remember, so, Usually I would do one page of health a day, a day. Okay. but uh, when I, so I memorized Surah Al-Baqarah okay. at an er- earlier stage and then from the back I reached until Surah, surah Al-Nisa. Okay. So the last Surah I did was Surah al Imran, oh, right? Sure. And uh, the, the, the day when I comp- completed the Quran, I said, you know, inshallah, I'm, I'm so excited. I just want to complete the Quran, you know, and I have four pages remained left, rem- left now. Yeah. So I, I sat down and I completed it in, in one in one day. Alhamdulillah. Four pages. In four one pages day. in one day. I was so excited, left. very very excited. Subhanallah. And, uh, was that in the house? Where was that? In the yeah, yeah, in the house. In the house. In the house. Like in the presence of your parents and your brothers, or just by yourself? Or so we used to do hifz by ourselves, and then we used to give it up, give it up to my to my mom. Yeah. At this time, we had uh, we know Mkharij and Tajweed and stuff, so it's just to make sure we we don't make any mistakes. Okay, mashallah. With memorization. Tell me, how was that day? That specific day. It how old were you? I was eleven. Can you explain the weather and the? What was that? Um, it was uh, from what, what I can remember. It was, it was really beautiful because um, I remember all, all the hugs and stuff I got from my parents after the cu- completing the Quran. It was a very, very exciting moment. It must have been a big moment for them as well, probably more than you, because obviously they're your parents, isn't it? They saw the journey and you, you know, the struggles of learning and memorizing. How old were you? Eleven. Eleven years old. Mm-hmm. Okay. So then, obviously, when you went to Saudi, I was already there. No. You already completed it. No. Sadiq, where did you complete the Quran? I completed on that trip to Saudi. On the trip? Yeah, when so we when you reached over on the yeah. trip. No, 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 not on the trip. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean on on that uh, you know yeah. a, in those six months that we was there in and Saudi. Is, is that in Mecca or Riyadh? No, I completed in Riyadh, okay. and then uh, as a as a gift, my Alhamdulillah, my my parents took us for Umrah oh in Mecca. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Oh, So at that time, how old were you, Sadiq, when you completed? Because so obviously you said you were eleven, right? Yeah. Trini. I was also 11. <laughs> I'm completed yeah. now. Well, yeah. Fucker, huh? yeah, alhamdulillah. <laughs> so, how was that experience? And, and how did you do it? Was it the same way you did Baqarah and then you reached Nisa as well? Yeah, I finished Ali Imran. So, I I did from Nas to uh, a certain point and then I memorized Surah Baqarah. So, you did the same thing? Same thing. Same yeah. thing. And was that easier for you, that method? Yeah, because I, I wanted to memorize Surah Baqarah before you complete the whole yeah, it's just like something I wanted to do you know like How about you? Yeah. did you choose to do the same thing 
what you chose or was it some an advice that you was given or I think it was an advice from someone from Sheikh Abdul Karim maybe I think so yeah okay. from the same Sheikh teacher Sheikh Abdul Karim is one of he's one of our teachers from Egypt but he was a uh, from uh, he, he's a Jazairi Jazairi okay. no, was he the one that used to come from from memorizing Hif. Hif. Yeah. okay so when you completed the Sadiq at the time um, like how were you feeling because obviously he told us yeah how was you feeling? Alhamdulillah, I was really, really excited, you know. Uh, but I was really excited to go for Umrah because, you know, seeing the Kaaba for the first time. And you hadn't gone beforehand? No. No, this was the yeah. first time going to Mecca, okay, you know. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, it was. Uh, so I was, you know, excited about both things. But the excitement of going to Masjid al Haram yeah. overtake me more than, you know, completing the Quran at that time. Because I'm just so excited to go see, you know, the the Kaaba and hear the you know the imams in the like haram. Uh, the Haram, Sh- Shuraim. Is that your favorite? Uh, at a point in time, yeah, Sh- uh, Sheikh R- Shuraim and also Sudais, okay, yeah. they were on the top so of my my, my lips. Yeah, <laughs> the, Alhamdulillah, it was uh, really exciting. Allah Mubarak. So the man. Can you tell me, like, in terms of, because obviously we're going to get into Saudi and the life there, but I want to know, your journey with the Qur'an, what was your lot's timetable with the Qur'an? Obviously you said the teachers that came after Fajr and after Asr and after Isha, you said? Uh, Fajr, Dhuhr and Asr. Fajr, Dhuhr and Asr. Yeah. Those are teachers, obviously, they're there to come and teach you a lot, help yeah. you. Yeah. But outside of that, how much input did your parents put in and how did they put in input? A lot of input, especially especially my, my mom. Mom and dad, for sure. I remember she used to, at the time, uh, in Egypt, she used to uh, put on the Quran on the computer, okay. and she used to make us sit down there and repeat after the, the reciter. Mostly used to be Husari. Oh, that's, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. perfect. Yeah. yeah, Alhamdulillah, my mom she she put in a lot into helping us uh, after the permission of Allah to f- to complete the Quran. So you used to kind of listen a lot as well. Yes, a lot, a lot. And would you read, would you not both read to her before you read to your teacher? Yes, طبعا. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and obviously, if she, and then how about you lot together? Did you work as a team? Was there any competition in racing? No, no, because he was way ahead of me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Older. Yes, alhamdulillah. Okay, so now you've completed the Quran, you got the gift of going for Umrah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. And what was your gift in terms of when you completed the Quran? Allah, I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, he, he got the cell phone, mashallah. Oh, you see, I you remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, you remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now the Quran is there. Allah, you know, may Allah Azza wa Jalla make you from the Ahl Quran. Mm-hmm. In terms of when you completed the Quran, what was next? What was the next chapter? Like, talk, talk to me about Saudi. I want to know about Saudi, your experience there. Where did you live? Your time there with the ulama and the brothers meeting them. Talk, talk to me about that. So in Mecca, we stayed for six months. Yeah. Um, no, in, in Mecca, part of the six months we stayed. Yeah, part of the six months. Because we mix it up between uh, Riyadh, Riyadh uh, Mecca, and we also went to Jeddah for a little, a short period of time. A very short period of yeah. time. Okay. At yeah. this time, my father was, uh, I think he was job searching, right? Yeah, at the yeah. time. Okay. In Mecca, we, we joined uh, the Mahal in the Haram. Mashallah. Well, Ma- and myself. So we used to attend uh, as Mustami'een. Okay, yeah. So we just could on, just go and sit down and just benefit. Obviously, you didn't have any karma as well, so you couldn't do that. Yeah, right? Sahih. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how was that? Um, how did you manage to benefit from in Mecca at that time? And uh, we, we used to benefit a lot. From but the Yeah, but mostly from the ulama. Okay. Mostly from the ulama. Uh, Sheikh Wasiullah, Sheikh Rabi'i. At the time, he he was residing in Mecca. Yeah. Every every Jum'ah after after Salat al Jum'ah, we used to drive from the Haram to attend his class with him and Sheikh uh, Ahmed Bazmoud. Yeah. And how was that for you? Sir? Alhamdulillah, it was amazing. I remember uh, seeing Sheikh Rabia for the first time, and also Sheikh Ahmed Bazmoud. Yeah. Uh, we attended some of his classes because uh, he used to have classes in a separate masjid. Besides uh, reading for uh, Sheikh Rabi, yeah, yeah. yeah, and also Sheikh Wasi Allah was really beautiful yeah, as well. Yeah, beautiful. Allah Subhanallah. Subhanallah. In, the yeah, in the Haram. Yeah. Allah Okay, 
you stayed there for a couple of months and then how did you not manage to stay there for the years that you managed to stay there for because I believe it was six years right together in Saudi oh no no we went back we, after that yeah we wasn't able to stay anymore because we only had a six month visa at the time yeah. at the time yeah okay. so we had to go back so we went back to uh, Trinidad and we opened another we masjid. Back to Trinidad again. Yeah. yeah, after the six months. But uh, when we went back to Trinidad, uh, the masjid that we left the brothers in charge of, someone else came and took it over. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So when we went back, we came back with gifts and everything. But when we entered the masjid, <laughs> everyone was cold. <laughs> yeah. Wow. No one, no one yeah. came to give it. No one came and give us salams or anything. Yeah. They was no more angry at us than than you know happy for us you know and we at the age we, we were confused we didn't know like what did we do wrong you know <laughs> Long <laughs> Long time. Time. so at that point in time uh, alhamdulillah my parents uh, they decided to open a dawah center and this was for a short period of time I can't remember if it's a couple of months to a year I can't remember but uh, yeah they opened a dawah center to have classes and teach people and we did uh, summer camp for the for the younger students for the youth, yeah. to teach them Quran and stuff. Oh, so you know, kind of getting involved teaching them. Yeah, yeah. Quran. And uh, and then after, Alhamdulillah, my father found a place to open another masjid. It was really nice. Alhamdulillah, that that time of our lives, my life specifically, it was Alhamdulillah, it was also amazing. Yeah, uh, because uh, all of the brothers and my father started teaching them, and Alhamdulillah, it was. It was really nice. Oh no, sure. yeah. And then what happened after that, Abdul Malik? So after, how long did we stay in Trinidad? Was it two years? A year and something, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah then we, we, we got through to go back to Saudi. This time was for longer. This time was long, the longest day. So how, how long? Si between six or seven years, I think. Because for Ramadan, we would get invited to come back. To the States or Trinidad? To leave Tarawih. To leave Tarawih. Just you two or the whole family? Uh, well, the whole family we, would we go with We us. always oh. move together. Yeah, the whole all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. My <laughs> father always keeps us together. <laughs> That's very important. That's very important. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. That way, obviously, you're not missing out each other's lives as well. Yeah. So every Ramadan, you will come to the States when you go to Tree. Yeah. Okay, so talk, talk to me about that as well. How was that experience? You know, what, how, what age were you when you first left Tarawih at the Manik? Ibad al Rahman. Yeah. Uh, at the age of 10. What message was that? That's the first mushroom my dad opened. Oh, in Trini? Yeah. Okay. Um, and yourself? My first time leading Taraweeh, I think, was in Masjid Tawheed al awwal That's in Trini? Yes. I, I think I was too young at the point in time he started leading in Masjid Ibad al Rahman. But. Uh, How old were you? In no, it was in Digo Mating. Yes. Yes. By, uh, by We got invited to come and lead Taraweeh. In when Trini. In, in Trini, Trini yeah. when we had the Dawah Center. Okay. Before we opened Masjid Tawheed al Awal. How old were you? Uh, I think I was between 11 and 12 around that, that time. Oh, bad, mashallah. Very young age. Yeah. Were you not scared? Were you the nervous? The first, were you the first couple of salat for me, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was shaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was really nervous oh, for, the, for the whole month of Ramadan. It was hard f for the first time, you know. It was, uh, it was different. You know, it's it's we we grew up in the house and shy and stuff, so uh, it was hard, you know, to lead everyone. To be in front of yeah, especially yeah. on the microphone. Even being here right now <laughs> <laughs> behind the camera is very difficult. Very difficult. <laughs> I understand. No, I think it's it's something that it happens for everyone mm. in terms of stage fright. You know, being whether it's leading imam, whether it's talking to someone, whether it's interview, whatever it may be. Yeah. So how did you not manage to adapt to it to make it a thing where okay, yeah, I'm gonna do this kind of thing? So my dad, he 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 put us to lead all the the the, the salawat except for duhur and asr. Was this in Trini? Where, wherever we we are. Oh, he used to just push you lot forward. Yeah. Okay. So um, did that did that help? So yeah, it helped a lot. <laughs> So after leading a, a lot of salawat, of course you get you get accustomed to it and you're like, okay. it's, it's, you get like it's used to yeah. it. Yeah, it comes second nature. How about yeah. yourself? Same thing. Same thing, yeah. Okay, and in terms of like um, like, was that something that helped you lot leading tarawih? Did it help with muraja? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Alhamdulillah. And did you lot? And then was there a stage where you did it together? Yeah. In tarawih. Yeah. Yeah. yeah at, in Dikumatin, since he's, he began leading, 
That's when you did we it. always every every year after that we always did it together. together. We was only so separated, I think, two years because I was stuck in uh, in Guyana for COVID. Okay. And then for the other Ramadan, I was by our beloved brother Abu Yusuf Khalifa in New York. In yeah. New York. This was in Ramadan that passed, but the one before that. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, it was. It wasn't uh, something that was negative. If you yeah. like not being able to lead with him, you know. Yeah. yeah. Alhamdulillah, it was. Uh, it was really amazing. Abu Yusuf made it comfortable, and and the community there were really welcoming. Mashallah. And Alhamdulillah, it felt. Uh, Alhamdulillah, it felt really good being there. So in terms of when you did it together, who did what? Who first? Oh, we used to just mix it up. So one night I I will lead the first four, yeah. then he will lead the second four, yeah. Yeah. and the following night he will lead the first four. Yeah, so you mix it up. Yeah. yeah. So did you not used to do muraja together as well when you're doing tarawih? Uh, the muraja. Yourselves and then lead together. We used to mostly give it up to my mom. Yeah. My mom, oh. she still used to play the role of uh, muraja'ah after we completed the Quran. We still used to give up muraja'ah for her. So, so at the time when you're doing Tarawih, I'm talking about specifically. No. Would you do muraja'ah together or would you same thing as well? You read it to your mom? To, to you? Sometimes my mom and sometimes we do it together uh, by ourselves. Okay. No. Yeah. Because uh, we always, even though uh, we were, uh, you know, we completed the Quran, uh, I always uh, rather use the Quran because sometimes when you're reciting, you always forget. Yeah. Me personally, you know, yeah. I always forget, so I always use the Quran. So I would just read uh, whatever I have to recite in Taraweeh yeah. and make sure that I'm proficient in it. But I would also have the Quran like this. Just in you case. Know? Yeah, in Taraweeh. Okay. Just in case I need to check back, you know. Okay, yeah. And that, that was, uh, that, that's the best option for me because it's uh, comfortable. So you're not kind of not going to be nervous. Yes, so, nervous. Uh, so I won't forget as well. Because sometimes when you're reciting and you're com contemplating, you know, it, when you're revising, you're reading faster. Okay. okay. But when you're in Taraweeh, yeah. you're, uh, you know, everything is being, you know, Given all the, the the letters and and tajweed, everything is right, you know. So I think it's more comfortable for me to use the Quran. Is that, was that the same for you? Same thing. Same yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So up until now, like but in terms of Taraweeh, that's something that makes you guys feel comfortable. Yes. Okay, inshallah. Okay, let's go back to the topic of Riyadh because I know that's where obviously you guys stayed. How was the experience? I don't, I don't even need to ask you questions. Just tell me everything about Riyadh from the beginning until the end. You told me some parts yesterday moving into the the hay that you lived in, the brothers, yeah. the football, the ulama, the duros, you yeah. know, the people. How was that? Well, it was, when we came back to Saudi at that, that time, when we closed Masjid al-Tawheed al-Awwal and we traveled, uh, we went to, uh, we landed in Jeddah first. Okay. And then we went to Mecca for a couple of months. We joined back the Mahad for a little bit. And then uh, we visited the Riyadh and my, my parents decided, uh, you know, everyone decided that we wanted to benefit from Sheikh Saleh al Okay. That was, th that was the reason we moved to Riyadh. So how was that then when you finally moved into Riyadh? How was that experience? It, it, was, uh, it was really, really amazing because, you know, at that point in time, Sheikh Fawzan had classes four days of, of the week, the you week. know. Okay. So we used to attend all of them, alhamdulillah. But you know, at that yeah. time, sorry to fight Sadiq, um, like, did you not have friends there or community? Did your father or mother know anyone there? Like, how did you manage to just become settled in, or did you just do your own thing where you had to struggle with everything and find accommodation and all that stuff? Uh, well, I can't remember who helped us the first time. But we, we never had any friends until we moved to Haifuwaiq, which was yeah. l later on. So yeah. Okay, so how. Like so how we used to go to Sheikh Fawzan classes father uh, the whole family my mom yeah. my sister my brothers yeah. um and after class we just used to go back home we never used to socialize uh, socialize with, with anyone we, we don't didn't really know much people to be honest How with you, old were you about that time? uh because <coughs> obviously it's a couple of years i think it was 16 17, 16 17 for me yeah. so you're coming into young adults yeah yeah how was that not socializing with people what effect did that have on you 
it, it was difficult because uh, you don't know how to socialize with, with, with people with people yeah it's, it's very difficult to talk to them and you know it's it's it's, it's different okay I can't can explain it yeah yeah. 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 Uh, yeah likewise it was different yeah different. and uh, you know we was missing the brothers in Trinidad because we got you know you we made a community yeah we made a community and we had some companions there yeah. so when we moved to Saudi not having the companionship was a bit difficult but yeah. alhamdulillah we met really beloved close brothers so, now. so yeah. was that when you moved to that hey Hay Fayha, the first place we moved to was Hay Al Jazeera. Okay. Yeah. Hay Al Jazeera, which is very close to Hay Al Fayha. Yeah. Which is Hay Al Fayha is where Sheikh Fawzan resides now. Okay, and that's where he was teaching. The Fajr uh, classes. Okay. okay. That's where he lives. Okay. But uh, the masjid where he teaches four t- four times uh, a week, four days a week, it's a it's, it's in a different Hay different neighborhood so you just come here basically drive there yeah it's yeah. about 15 20 minutes drive okay before we, before we talk about the whole moving to that hey when you met with the brothers yeah what were you doing in terms of schooling wise like was it still homeschooling were you doing something online were you going to public school? at this time i had completed the ged the high school diploma equivalency in, in new york yeah before we went back uh, how did you do that was that online no i came we came to new york to do oh, it okay thank you okay so yeah. How did you do when you were in Riyadh at that time? Actually, in Riyadh, uh, my parents uh, they, they, they told me I have to I have to uh, get the GED because they wanted me to join Jamia over there in, in Saudi. Okay. Uh, Jamia to Imam Saud. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, my mom she went ahead and made an appointment for me to do to do the GED test. Alhamdulillah, I did it and I went back to Saudi. Okay. And then did you eventually apply? I did apply. I got through. Alhamdulillah, Jamatul Imam. Uh, I'm still waiting to uh, to get some paperwork done first, inshallah. So I know that takes a long process. Very long. Yeah. <laughs> and your father told me. Yeah. So, Deek, at the time, how about you? What were you doing with us to school? Uh, it was uh, the same book that he did, GED. Yeah. But uh, when I went to do my practice test, yeah. they put me in the wrong room. <laughs> so, I did the wrong test. <laughs> so in New York. Yeah, and then after that, you know family and kids and everything and it just prolonged so i still have to go back and take the test okay. so i have to do some revision and uh, go back and travel and take the test okay and um, now we're moving into the hay talk to me about that Dominic. the hay al uh, we, we we stayed for i think two years that's a long time yeah um and then we met a brother who we knew from before, from from the U.S. Okay. And he came to me. I remember he came to me and he was telling me, you know, we should we should try to move close to Sheikh Ali Al Haddadi yeah. community, Hayt yeah. Waik, because the Sheikh Mashallah Tabarakallah he has classes every single day, yeah. and and you can have a close relationship with the Sheikh. He's easy to, to 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 get access to. You know, you can walk up to him and ask him questions and stuff. Sheikh Fawzan was different. Was different. Yeah, yeah. After classes, he class. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, so um Alhamdulillah after after the brother came to, to, to myself and advised me and, and Siddiq to go and benefit from Sheikh Ali Haddadi yeah. we spoke to my father mm. and uh, we, we decided to go every Jumu'ah at the time Sheikh Fawzan stopped giving khutb, khutab okay. uh, so we used to take a drive to Sheikh Ali Al Haddadi community for Jumu'ah every Jumu'ah from Hay from Hay Al Fayha. Okay. Yeah, and then when we when we went there and we st- we saw the the, the positivities and the classes and and, and Sheikh Ali Al Hadadi how beautiful his his characteristics were, may Allah preserve him. Uh, alhamdulillah, my dad and my mom they they they, they said we, we have to make the move. Yeah. Nah. So tell me, Sadiq. And right around that time when we were moving. Is when we met our beloved brother Bulhan. Muhammad Bulhan. One and only Muhammad Bulhan. Yeah, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you meet him? Uh, I think I met him either in uh, when my dad and Abdul Malik was teaching teaching at Berlitz, okay. or in Sheikh Ali's. Wait, 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 uh, you're, you're, you're skipping. So you're going to tell me. So you were teaching at Berlitz at the time. No. 
Okay, I'm right. So at the time when you're there, yeah. you're also working as well. Yes. Okay, mashallah. How For a very short period of time. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So did you enjoy it? Did you like it? Working was it was it was easy, mashallah, because I'm going to work with my dad. We go, we're going to work together. In the he's same teaching and you're teaching. He's teaching in a classroom. I t- I'm teaching in, a, in another classroom, and the, the classroom next to me is another Trini, Trini brother who I know. <laughs> so it's I easy, mashallah. Easy. Yeah, Allah Allah. 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 Yeah, I can't remember if I met him in either Berlitz or uh, I think uh, in Sheikh Fawzan's masjid. Okay. My father introduced him to us, you know, because my father met him in Nanarat. Oh, when your father was teaching that. Yeah, okay. yeah. Allah Allah. And then uh, he was also helping another brother move to Haytuwik. I think uh, at that time Abdul Basit was moving as well. Okay. Yeah. Another so brother from the UK. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, and Muhammad Bulhan, <laughs> Alhamdulillah, he found an apartment right upstairs always for the brother, you know. So he was on the highest floor and we yeah. wasn't. Bottom yeah. floor. Yeah, yeah. Allah Allah. Allah. Um, I mean, I mean. So talk to me about Haytuwik. Talk to me about it. How was that? Alhamdulillah, Haytuwik was amazing. We also met, uh, uh, you know, our beloved brother Muhammad Abdul Wali. Ah, mashallah, you met him there. And Sheikh Hosan's masjid as well. Okay, so now you're meeting more. Yeah, more yeah, yeah. D- yeah. These are when we, when when we start to uh, <coughs> get real friends, people okay. who we we used to talk to and uh, see at the classes and go out and eat every now and then and stuff. Mashallah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and also we met uh, Abdul Hamid Edge. In so Berlitz. <laughs> yes, I met him in Berlitz when I used to go with with them sometimes just to you know be there. Yeah, and he was teaching there. Well. He was teaching there. Yeah. Okay, mashallah. So these are the Riyadh brothers now. Right? Yeah, yeah. Allah so we, w- we will call it the Hayt Wake brothers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they all, live in the, all of them lived in the same hay. All Abdul Basri, yeah. Abdul Wali, and Abdul Hamid at the time. Yes. Okay, and Muhammad Bulhan. Muhan, he, he, he used to be in a jamia, but oh, he, he used to okay. stay with Abdul Basit upstairs. Okay, yes. Yeah, and then, and then, and then when, uh, at a point in time, Bulhan used to also stay with me in my room. Yes. <laughs> Allah Allah. So you became close. Really close, oh. yeah. yeah. Mashallah. So talk to me about that. How was that? Did that help you a lot in terms of, you know, settling in and being in the area, having that sense of community and brotherhood? Yeah, for sure, definitely. So Haidu Waik is, 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 a, is out, out of the city. It's way more quiet. It's where the Bedouin Arabs are. Okay. Yeah. So it's like on the outskirts. Kind of yeah. 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 Sahih. And rent and stuff was very cheap. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So how long did you lot stay in that for? We stayed until we we left Saudi. So what did you lot do there? Obviously, you went to the classes. Was there anything else that you were doing extra outside? Of? Everything was related to the to 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 the, to the community in in Haitou, Sheikh Ali Al Haddadi's community. It was beautiful. Actually. Everything was revolved about uh, our own classes and seeking knowledge. And there was classes every day. And Sheikh Ali Al Haddadi, Hafizahullah, he he had, he had a big impact in us because because of his his adab and akhlaq. It was so beautiful. Actually. When he speaks, when he gives a khutbah or a class, he's always smiling. You know, he's delivering uh, the message with a smile. It had a, a great impact on us. His his asloop. And he's very humble, he's very down to earth. He's, uh, SubhanAllah, he's a really beautiful, really, really beautiful and humble, down to earth scholar. May Allah preserve him and protect him. Mm-hmm. 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 And in terms of obviously, you lot told me that there was times as well that um, he came to you lot's house as well. Yes, he did. Yeah. He, w- uh, when my father was sick, yeah. he came. He came and he visited, he visited my, father, my father. You know, we, al- we, we always used to get invited to his. Uh, you know, personal classes. You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. private, private, yeah, private, private classes, classes. Right. for the height. Yeah, the for level the height. height. Yeah. <laughs> hey, have have uh, you know? They've got personal treatment. Now, yeah, yeah. Treatment, yeah. yeah about that. So how was that for the obviously like? Kind of that just reminds me of how, in terms of generally speaking, how a person should be like the Prophet Sallallahu How he was with his companions. He wasn't. He didn't have on the coat. I always call it a coat, meaning, you know, he's. Prophet Sallallahu so he's got this risala, this big message on his two shoulders, something great, but yet he's with the community, yeah. he's helping build the masjid, masjid Nabawi. He's sitting down with them, eating with them, joking with them, laughing with them, you know, going to, you know, the, the, 
the battles with them. He's he's on the forefront of everything. Yeah. He's not just laid back and you know making orders. So yeah. in terms of how he was with his companions when he would teach them, he'd be with them, yeah. involved in the community. Yeah. Yeah. And then obviously in terms of that's how the scholars should be, and that's how the that's how Sheikh Ali was. That uh, at the same great time he's a teacher. Yeah. 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 So we had so great respect. Great respect for him. Respect yeah. 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 And he, uh, Alhamdulillah, we even. You know, as a you know, as an encourage, uh, encouragement, we also used to see him attending Sheikh Fawzan classes now and again. You know, so it's even funny. though he's a, a Sheikh, yeah. seeing him attend Sheikh Fawzan classes was a, a motivation. You know, uh, it was it was something. It's like it, it shows you how d- how down to earth and humble the Sheikh was. Yeah, you know, Allah Barak. You know, it's really nice to see that even though that you know y- you're a teacher yeah. or a Sheikh. There's al- there's always room for you know improvement and studying and, and gaining more and more you know. Oh, okay. oh, that sounds amazing. Man. It makes me feel like I want to go to the. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I didn't get to meet the Sheikh Subhanallah, may Allah preserve him. Um, like I told you, that every time I went to Saudi, or uh, Riyadh, that is the city, they were I always outside of the city. But I heard they're very different and they're very nice, mashallah. Yeah, it's sure. amazing. I'm on better. So, Ikhwani, tell me what was the next stage in terms of when you stayed there. Sorry, you know, before that, what did you lot used to do to kind of just relax and have fun? And yeah, kind of, you know, outside of the whole studying and whatnot, the timetable. No. Like, what were you lot getting up to in Riyadh? Football. Yeah, football. football. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Every week with our brother Abdul Wali yeah. and Abdul Han, yeah. Abdul Basit, Abdul Hamid, and also other brothers from the high. You know, there, there were brothers from France, okay. a brother from uh, Kazakhstan, yeah. Abad Rahim al Kazaki, yeah. uh, Abad Uthman. Yeah. So who's the best I'm going to be honest? In football? Yeah, be honest. Bulhan. Bulhan. Allah Akbar. He's really good. He's got technical skills. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Bulhan, inshallah, that's a message. If I'm, I'm going to challenge him, inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> so who used to organize that? Where did you look? Used to Bulhan? Bulhan, 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 Bulhan is the guy. Allah 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 Bulhan was the man. Huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so was that in the same... Hay that you lot used to live in in terms of hay to work you lot used to have football there or was it outside or so sometimes we used to we started playing on the streets in front of our house yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. because Back to the high the high is very quiet yeah, it's oh, dead yeah, yeah. It's, it's no it's cars really driving dead. and stuff Mashallah. yeah so alhamdulillah and then do we uh, Bulhan, alhamdulillah we used to find these pitch that you rent yeah, yeah, yeah. so everyone used to chip in just chip into render. 20 yeah. reals each. Yeah. 15, 20 reals each. And then, yeah. alhamdulillah, we used to get those. We started that. So How every many of you were in number? Like, was it 11, 11? 11 aside, 7 aside? Or was it like sometimes five? it used to be less brothers. Yeah. And sometimes, sometimes yeah. a lot. So we used so to pay like, uh, like, you know, teams. So you score one, you, you come out mm-hmm. when it had a lot of people. Mm-hmm. But if it had just enough, we just played the whole time, you know. Yeah. And was it all from the West, the brothers that were playing football? Mm-hmm. Uh, not just the West, brothers from Kazakhstan and France and, France and even Arab brothers as well. So sometimes, yeah. Okay, okay, what else other than football? What else did you lot used to do? Uh, other than that, we didn't really do much. Probably eat as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah eating, yeah, for sure. And you would come, and that would be like as a community. The brothers from Haytharik would go out together and eat. A few of us. Yeah. Mashallah. Abdul Han, Abdul Basit. Abdul Basit. We also also two brothers moved from uh, uh, America. Yeah. Trinidadian brothers that we met in America, okay. they moved to Saudi while we were living there, oh, and they also moved to the Hay. Hey, so and they lived right opposite, right on the other side of us. Yeah. So that became okay. the main Hay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Allah So they used to do everything with us as well. You know, Alhamdulillah. Fiyad and Fadil. Okay, tell me, Ikhwan, what was the best moment that you had in Saudi and the worst moment and why? Those times were the best moments. In my life. In okay. Yeah, in my life in general. Both of you. Yeah. But is there something specific or just the whole thing? Everything. Everything, yeah. Everything in, about in it. The so you can't narrow it down to one thing. I don't think so. <laughs> because everything was so, you know, everything was so. It was a blessing that. Yeah. You don't know what to choose from because everything is positive. Allah wa barik. You know, it was always benefiting, and it's always a benefit. Allah wa barik. That was the best time, benefiting from Islam yeah. in my life. Likewise. What was the worst moment for you? Like the worst moment that you can say, like, you know what? Yeah, this is very tough time. 
It wasn't in Saudi. I, I don't think I have a. I don't think I have a moment. A worst moment. Nothing. Not from Saudi. So it's fun. Like I mean, I don't blame you lot for saying that because it's true. Like you know, being in that kind of environment where you hear the Iran with the Muslims, and not just that, because you can be just with Muslims in the Iran, but you have ulama scholars. Yeah, and yeah. And of course, and ulama one of the Anbiya. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're the inheritors of the of the, of the prophets. So it just completes everything, kind of. Thing, everything. You know? And the yeah. safety there. As well in that place, that beautiful land where it's so safe, the police yeah. officers wear slippers. That just you know what I was talking <laughs> about. Is, do you want to know how safe it is there? Yeah. Police officers are wearing slippers. Most most meaning they don't have to really work. Yeah. Because of we, we could go to sleep with our doors wide open. Actually, exactly. no one's gonna yeah. come in. Yeah. You know, you got the car keys and the ignition. Just leave it there. Go to the shops. Put your wallet in the dashboard and you come back. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Allah. It's really amazing. <laughs> So you s- you not staying in the city for how many years exactly at a time? Four, four years. years here. Four years. Four years. Okay. They stayed for four years here. Yeah. And obviously yeah, you were stuck here. Yeah, I was stuck here. Then obviously after that, the last chapter is basically... Coming here. How was that? So, subhanAllah, um, when, when we decided to leave Trinidad, it was because of the the, the hal of Trinidad, Trinidad situation mm-hmm. with the crime. It was becoming uh, very, very bad. So much so that it had uh, two murders on the same street where the masjid is, which is where we, we reside. Wow. Okay. The reason why we, why we chose uh, Buffalo uh, besides Florida was because we see there's a lot of potential here. There's a lot of Muslims. You go into Walmart, uh, any shopping plaza, you, you any street, you, you're going to see Muslims walking, kids uh, walking. You know, subhanAllah, in America, i never seen on Yom Al-Jumu'ah, on the streets, you see Muslims walking towards the Masajid for Jumu'ah. Never seen it before. Not in Florida, and not in New York, definitely. You know, so it was, it was, uh, it was a positive uh, here in Buffalo. Yeah. It was one of the reasons for us to move here. You saw that sense of, okay, maybe it can work. Yeah. Yeah. Mashallah. With the Muslims here. Yeah. Because, you know, it's, alhamdulillah, over here, the masajids, you know, the, the the people here, they take salawat and the masjids more seriously, okay. you know, and they also have their kids and stuff in the tahfil, and they're more serious when it comes to Islam. So uh, we saw, you know, lots of potential here when it comes to Islam. And that was appealing for you as well, isn't it? In terms of you know, that's like, okay, yeah, you know what? If that's the case and they're taking it seriously, then we can also contribute. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. It's amazing, but before we end, two a couple of things. First thing is, what pieces of advice? We'll start with you, Sadiq, that you give to those that want to learn the Quran from your personal experiences. Mudawama. Huh? Consistency is 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 the key. You have to be consistent. In the beginning, it doesn't matter how much you do. You can do even two lines, one line. But what matters is that once you have the consistency down, yeah. you know, and the intent, of course, intention, ikhlas, and doing it for the right reason, yeah. you know, the most important thing is consistency. Always revising. Always, always, always revising. Always revising. It doesn't have to be long, you know. It can be 10 minutes a day, 5 minutes a day. Yeah. But once you have the consistency down, then it's going to be easy for you. Anything else? Uh, and also listen to good recitals. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so who's your favorite reciter now? At this point in time, yeah. uh, Sharif Mustafa. He's a brother from Egypt, Mashallah. and uh, he recently started posting up, you know, videos of him. Yeah. Mashallah. But overall, uh, I think it was uh, Muhammad Luhaydan and Hutaybi and Yasser al Dusiri. Three of them. Three, yeah. yeah. Yourself, what's your advice for the best of the people wanting to learn it and you know, memorize it? Of course, firstly, more peace and surely for Allah. Mm. And more peace and surely for Allah. So, uh, my advice is basically the same thing as Siddiq one. You know, uh, try to dedicate some time, at least every day, at least, uh, to dedicate some time for the Quran. It doesn't have to be much. Uh, and we learned this from our, our beloved brother Muhammad Abdul Wali, mashallah, yeah. in Saudi and Riyadh. Mashallah, he had a halaqa he made for the tulab, uh, 
and it was very strong. It was run by Sheikh Ali al-Haddadi. Uh, we had a uh, tahfid of Quran, a tahfid al mutun and stuff like this. And everything was monitored by the Sheikh Ali al Haddadi. But uh, Muhammad Abdul Wali was one. Of, he, I think he was the one who organized the yeah, whole program. So from Allah. this, uh, we learned that Hamashay uh, uh, is, is to be consistent. yeah consistent. Yeah, we see, we saw the effects of it when uh, Muhammad Abdul Wali and uh, uh, Mufarrih and also Sheikh Ali. When, when they did this halaqa, how important mudawama is, consistency, you know, this, that, that was an eye-opener when it comes to consistency, because it's really important, it doesn't matter how much you do, what matters is, is this mudawama, mudawama, and the amount is going to increase, because remember you're training yourself, you know, and, you know, sometimes you start at one ayah and then, Maybe in two, three months, you, you memorize two pages, yeah, three pages, sure. you know, because of Mudawam. Yeah, keeping it consistent. Yeah. 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 May Allah reward you all. Um, the next thing that I want to say is, we'll start with you, Abdul Haq, Abdul Malik, and then go over to Sadiq. If you can please just recite something from the Quran. It's a must, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, there's no options, please. Okay, I'll go and I'll go يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله ان الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فأنساهم أنفسهم أولئك هم الفاسقون لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم خلاص انتهى خلاص اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم 
يسألك الناس عن الساعة قل إنما علمها عند الله وما يدريك لعل الساعة تكون قريبا إن الله لعن الكافرين وأعد لهم سعيرا خالدين فيها أبدا لا يجدون وليا ولا نصيرا يوم تقلب وجوههم في النار يقولون يقولون يا ليتنا أطعنا الله وأطعنا الرسول وقالوا ربنا إنا أطعنا سادتنا وكبراءنا وكبراءنا فأضلون السبيلا ربنا آتهم ضعفين من العذاب والعنهم لعنا كبيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تكونوا كالذين آذوا موسى فبرأه الله مما قالوا وكان عند الله وجيها يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما إنا عرضنا الأمانة على السماوات والأرض والجبال فأبين أن يحملنها وأشفقن منها وحملها الإنسان إنه كان ظلوما جهولا ليعذب الله المنافقين والمنافقات والمشركين والمشركات ويتوب الله على المؤمنين والمؤمنات وكان الله غفورا رحيما قولوا اللهم بارك أبوان وشن من الله عز وجل وزاد البوض نكيكم أهل القرآن عن ميك القرآن حجة لكم ولا عليكم وحجة لنا جميعا لا علينا and it's just a سبحان الله a message to all the parents that have parents myself first and foremost I'm a parent and all those that have parents to try your utmost best to you know do that which you can even if it's little but have an impact on your children being able to be from those that have the love for Quran because one thing that's different that I've seen with the communities and I think it's, it doesn't matter where it is in the world is that some parents have this love and they send their children to Quran schools and they memorize Quran but that's very good and it's, 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 it's nice to see that maybe your children are memorized but it's not just about memorizing the Quran you know you don't want your children to be from those that have completed the Quran memorized but then their life is completely different why because there's no understanding so it's not just about memorizing the Quran and that's it completing it's not just about hip you know and it's not just from those things that's going to benefit your child but what's more important is making them have love for the Quran why is the Quran important why should they memorize it making them understand it and then of course if it, it comes together and they have the understanding of the Qur'an and they memorize it then they'll be able to implement it so may Allah Azza wa Jal make it easy for all the parents all the Muslim parents that have children and they want their children to memorize Qur'an may Allah make them from those that memorize the Qur'an make the journeys easy 
make mm-hmm. all of us be from those that are able to put in because remember what you uh, what you plant or, and where you plant that seed inshallah if it's sincere and it's for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal and you do it according to the sunnah then you see the fruits of that plant that you planted you know of that seed that you put in so try your best to do it when they're young when they're young and the kids are young they're able to absorb in anything that you give them so you're going to be the one that would be able to see the fruits afterwards if they've been from the people of the Quran or they haven't all of this comes about to how much time you put into your children and that's something that's very very crucial and inshallah you'll be the one to get the reward afterwards why because remember that a person when they are from those that they see themselves at the stage where they're in their last stages and then Allah takes their soul your children won't benefit you if you've given them just dunya and you've given them properties and, and they've inherited from you but what's going to benefit you is if you give them knowledge and then that from the people of knowledge or they love the Quran and they make dua for you one of them salih yadrula meaning righteous son or daughter that makes dua for their parents that's what you're going to see so make sure you dedicate time that's my message dedicate time to islam with regards to your children it doesn't matter how much it takes just like you just hit us to has a story may allah preserve both of them and protect them from ayn and protect them from all evil and all the muslims brother sadiq and brother abdul malik that they were from the track literally i'm calling you guys travelers because they traveled from place to place but that was due to the jud of the parents and may allah make it sincere that which that both of their parents did for them in order for them to be able to have benefited and inshallah on that note we'll end it but before we end it do you have any final words sadiq jazakallah khair you know we appreciate uh, your travel here you know it's it makes us happy I'm, I'm more happy to be in your presence as an honor. Zafim the Khair. And Brother Abdul Malik, any last words? Sharaf Tana. Zafim the Khair. Zafim the Khair. Akram Tumona. Zafim the Khair. And on that, we'll end the discussion. I don't know what episode this is, but we've done a couple, so MSO discussion. We'll end it there. And Bidni Allah, it's not the last one. We're going to have some more, inshallah, Bidni Allah, when I stay in Buffalo. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Shalom Allah, ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa tu ilayk. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين واخذ دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين